Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the rules for taking the derivatives of the six inverse trigonometric functions. So the very first thing you're going to want to do is pause this video and write these down. Before you do, notice that for the first time, we're giving our derivative rule with the chain rule built in. So instead of telling you an expression you could use as the derivative of the inverse sine of x, I'm letting u stand for some other function of x. And this is how we can take the derivative of the inverse sine of u, the inverse sine of some function of x. So pause the video, write all these down, I'll point some things out so that as you're writing them down you'll notice it can help you memorize them, which you're going to have to do. Notice um, co-functions, so sine and cosine are co-functions, tangent and cotangent are co-functions, secant and cosecant are co-functions. Notice that co-functions inverse cofunctions, derivatives are opposites. So you'll see secant, inverse secant has a positive derivative, or there's no negative in the rule, and then the inverse cosecant has a negative built in the rule. So you see on the right hand side there's three negatives, left hand side three with no negatives. Take a minute, pause this, write them down carefully, and start to memorize them. So here I've been, this is our first example, I've been asked to find the derivative with respect to x of inverse sine of x squared. So I can recognize here that my inside function, I'm going to have to use the chain rule here, my inside function, the thing that was getting inverse signed, is x squared. So I'm going to write myself a note that u in this case equals x squared. It's a good time to point out that that negative 1 up there that says this is an inverse sign instead of regular sign is not an exponent. Using the power rule, bringing the negative 1 down will not lead to happiness. It's not going to help you. That negative 1 in this notation does not mean an exponent. It means the undoing function for the sine function. So these six inverse trigonometric functions, you'll have to know their derivatives. Don't try to use the power. I'll find out. Okay, so now I know u in this case is equal to x squared. So how do I find the derivative of the inverse sine of something? It's going to be... So d dx of inverse sine of x squared. I wrote, I copied the formula down from your notes paper, so it was a good time to check and make sure you wrote in the same thing that I have. Although yours is probably more legible. So it's going to be 1 over the square root of 1 minus whatever u was squared times du dx. Well, we said that u is x squared and du dx, the derivative of u with respect to x, is 2x. If you wrote your answer like this, it's perfect. It gets full credit. If you're taking the multiple choice section, that's going to be rewritten a little bit. The 2x will sit up top here. The square root of 1 minus x squared squared x to the fourth. So the derivative with respect to x is the inverse sine of x squared is 2x all divided by the square root of 1 minus x to the fourth. I just remembered I forgot to tell you those six derivatives for the inverse trigonometric functions I skipped the part where I told you where they come from so some people might be interested and some people might just be busy memorizing those six derivatives. So where they come from is not part of what you need to know in order to do well on the AP test. But watch for a video in the next you know, 12 or 14 hours to show you for those who are interested. So right now you're writing them down, you're getting started on the thought of memorizing all of them. Watch for a video tomorrow about where they come from, why they work. Okay, so here we have a next example. I have a particle that's moving and its position is inverse tangent of square root of t. How can I find the velocity of the particle when time is 16? Well, I know velocity is related to position with this relationship. Velocity is the derivative of position. So I want velocity 
at time 16. So the thing I'm looking for is V of 16. And I know that's going to be the same thing as finding X prime of 16. So don't try to tell me what X prime of 16 is until you tell me an expression for X prime. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to find X prime of T. Well, I know the derivative with respect to X of the inverse tangent of U is 1 over the square root of 1 plus U squared times DU DX. So it's not quite what's going on here. I have my U function is, I have a U function. It's the square root of T. It's the inside. It was the thing that was getting inverse tangented. Square root of T. And just notice that my variable this time, my input variable, isn't x, it's t. And so I'm just going to have to change the variable in my answer. The derivative of inverse tangent of something is 1 over 1 plus that something squared times the derivative, in this case with respect to t, of whatever that something is. So in this case my something is square root of t. And the derivative of the square root of t, well, we'll do that in the next line. So my x prime of t is 1 over 1 plus square root of t squared is t. So to be very clear, that says 1 divided by 1 plus t. And then the derivative of square root of t is 1 over 2 square root of t. That's just a simplified version of one-half t to the negative one-half, which you could also write. So this is my x prime of t. That gets full credit. Don't tell the pre-calculus class, but you have no obligation to rationalize denominators, have to have no radicals in denominators. Your answer here is fine. Our next step, we're going to find x prime of 16. So here we go, x prime of 16, I'm simply going to replace the t's in this expression with 16. So this is going to be 1 over 1 plus 16 times 1 over 2 times the square root of 16. So that's 1 17th times 1 over 2 times 4, 1 eighth. I think I'll stop right there. All right, we got one more example here. I'm going to find the derivative with respect to x of inverse secant of 5x to the fourth. So my first job here is to recognize that I have an inside, I have an inner function. I have something, it's not just plain x that's getting inverse secanted, it's this function of x. So I'm going to write myself a note that u in this case is equal to 5x to the fourth. So my derivative d dx of inverse secant of 5x to the fourth is going to be all right, so this one, it's got lots of extra pieces, right? 1 over the absolute value of u. u in this case is 5x to the fourth. There's the square root of, it's going to be u squared minus 1. Can I urge you, strongly urge you to put this u inside parentheses before you try to square it? And this whole thing is going to get multiplied by du dx, the derivative of u with respect to x. This one's not so bad. Derivative of 5x to the fourth is 4 times 5, 20. That's a time sign. 20x to the third. Again, feel free to leave your answer like this. But that's equal to uh, 20x cubed over... So x to the fourth. There are lots of other ways you could simplify this expression too. So 5x to the fourth. Common error that they're going to maybe try to catch you on is not squaring that 5 when you square x to the fourth. So that's 25x to the eighth minus 1. Final answer.